With each new season for Halo Infinite, we keep getting asked the question, how is it and is it worth getting back into Halo? And in this video, we're going to go into all about that. We're talking the new maps, Infection, Career Rank, Forge, and a whole lot more. So if you guys like these analytical videos, make sure to tap that like button. It's the best way to let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you're part of that 59% of people who are not subscribed to the channel, you want to stay updated with everything going on with gaming, well, you know what to do then. So let's get right into those details. So 343 released this season four infection patch notes. So I'm just gonna go down the list here. If you guys wanna find the part that you wanna know more about, well, I timestamped it in the video down below, but I highly suggest you watch the whole thing. The first thing they talk about is the highly anticipated career ranks. It's finally something to get you the grind for beyond just the battle pass, which like I talked about in a previous video, it's pretty easy to grind through and kind of leaves you with an end game situation. You're like, okay, well, why am I playing when I don't really have anything to progress with other than just playing Halo Infinite because it's fun. Well, I'm glad career ranks are in this game and they're more time-based rather than skill-based in a way. So then you're more just like, as long as you play enough, you'll rank up just fine, which I think is the proper way to do a career rank system. It's a shame that we've had to wait this long for this basic feature to come into a Halo game, but the ranks themselves are interesting enough. You got bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond onyx tier and you start at a recruit go all the way up to hero and along the way you'll be earning some special nameplates which to me i really could care less about i'm not really much of a nameplate fan especially since i have my secret little pilot nameplate that people only got when they were invited to that program so that's the only thing that has sentimental value to me because you can't really customize them how you want like you could in traditional halo so i don't really care for them but it seems like there's a little bit of an extra incentive at the end of the road because a tweet here from halo.api they look into the back end of halo Halo Infinite to see if there's any kind of cool, interesting things that we don't have up front with the game and states that for now, Hero Rank does not grant any reward, which is like, wow, really? Like all you get is just a flashy emblem. That's not that incentive really. But then the community director sketch says, stay tuned with a winky face, which definitely eases my concerns that yes, we will have something to grind for, but maybe that 343 is waiting for it to be a surprise to the community, but we just kind of have to wait and see if they do provide us any information about it. You know, I'll let you guys know here on the channel. Next, let's talk about the battle pass and the new armor core. The battle pass, I thought the stuff that's in it is pretty good. There's just a lot of repeats because of the way the system is designed that each individual thing you unlock takes up an entire tile. 343 talked about this with each coding that you unlock, it takes up an entire tile on the battle pass. Eventually within season five or later, they're looking to have you unlock a single coding for your armor or your weapons. And it just goes for all your different cores and weapons, which definitely should be the right way to go about this. We're just, this is at where we're at right now. So when you're scrolling through, you're like, okay, I've seen that one. I've seen that one. Yep, I've seen that one again. So there's a lot of repeats with it. And that's just kind of how the system is designed at the moment, but they will be improving it. So, but the stuff that's in it, is pretty cool. Some cool coatings, really nice death effect is mixed in there as well. If you wanna see my individual opinions, I have a live stream I just did of season four here on YouTube. I'll link that at the pinned comment of this video if you guys wanna see the more detailed analysis of the whole thing, which I'll be streaming more here on YouTube. I switched from Twitch over to YouTube here now. So if you guys wanna catch those live streams, make sure you tap subscribe. The new hazmat armor core is actually kind of awesome. A lot of the customization that they brought for this core is actually pretty cool. I thought like a lot of stuff you earn within the battle pass is awesome. It looks cool. I definitely will be rocking it. It seems like a fun core. The customization there is unique. It's interesting. It definitely stands out amongst all the other cores out there. So I, I think this probably would be like my third favorite core behind the Mark 7 and Mark 5B, just because I'm a bit more of a classic Halo fan myself. But this is a close third right behind also Rock so it'll probably be my fourth favorite. Continuing on with customization here, the new weapon model items that are coming in with season four are a godsend. Like finally, we're getting some new weapon geometry to come in the Halo. Halo Infinite, which is something I think should have been there at launch as well. But again, we are where we are right now because previously we've just been buying colors effectively and some different geometry when it comes to armor. Now you actually have it with your weapon that you can see in game. That's something a little bit more incentivizing to purchase. I hope with season five and later on, hopefully with these events coming throughout the season, which we'll talk a little bit on as well, that we'll actually see weapon geometry options as something we can pick up. Of course, all the cross core customization options that came with season four are fantastic. So all new coatings for your weapons and armor will all be cross-core which is fantastic adds so much more value 
to those coatings so then it actually makes you want to actually pick them up if you think they look cool. We have the new equipment of the Quantum Translocator and the Threat Seeker. Now the Quantum Translocator is the first addition as like a super power up kind of addition to Halo Infinite. It takes place of the OS and camo when it comes into rotation on a map. This is actually just really fun to play around with. Just like zipping and zapping from A to B just instantly is really freaking cool. There is a bit of a warm up or animation when it comes to teleporting away so you can't just like get out of jail free card when you get into the middle of a gunfight which is super important for of equipment like this to function properly within Halo. And of course Lucid just had to pull off some insane clip with this. Around the map with different teleports. <laughs> Dude, yeah. So when you see stuff like that happen, like, okay, yeah, that's quite overpowered. But also you gotta remember that Lucid is a complete freak when it comes to playing Halo. So from my experience of playing it, mainly with the infection that I haven't really seen it being utilized in any kind of unfair way, I think it's just kind of a really fun addition to just kind of like play around with. And from my current understanding is that the Quantum Translocator will be available in ranked modes, but not in any LAN HCS settings. I just find it hard that people who care for their ranks and also like, like to sweat it up in Halo would like this ability more than over shield or camo as I feel like those two abilities would be more impactful to the match than a quantum translocator. Again, it's a new bit of equipment that we've never really seen within Halo. So it takes some time within the community to figure out like the most effective tactics to use with this. Hit. And I'd like to see if anything cool happens with it, but I think it's gonna be more kind of like gotcha moments like we just saw with Lucid. If anything, it's like a really awesome clip. The Threat Seeker, I really have almost no interest in. Apparently it's supposed to be like the Threat Seeker's made for Arena now where the Threat Sensor has been redesigned to be more for like BTB with the recent patch update with season four, which we talked about on the channel here. And you can like bounce it around the wall with the threat seeker, which is, is I guess a nice change of pace, but I feel like it's just does the exact same thing as the threat seeker is revealing players locations that you can't see. Maybe the threat seeker is more suited for arena play, but from my experience, like I just don't really care much to use it. I don't find it that interesting. I mean, more the better, right? More stuff to do in the game is great when it comes to equipment and things, but I just, I don't really care. <laughs> Let's talk about the big game mode, the featured name of the season, Infection. Finally coming to Halo Infinite a year and a half late, but hey, it's there. And from my experience that it's a fun mode. Like I've never really been much of an Infection player. I mean, I played it a bunch back in like Halo 2 and like Halo 3 custom games. But for the most part, like I'm just kind of like, yeah, some infection. Like I never really cared for it in Halo 5, never cared for it in Halo 4, never really cared for it in Halo MCC or in Reach or really other games. So you're kind of asking the wrong person, honestly, if infection in this game works out well, because I'm coming from a point of view of someone who doesn't really care for the game mode. But I think the additions of equipment that are in Halo Infinite are fantastic. Halo Infinite Sandbox works out really well with the Infection. They're fun to shoot against, they're fun to play as as well. So as Infection goes, from my experience, it's still like a fun Infection mode. But is it something that I'm gonna be coming back to to continually keep playing? Probably not. Like I kind of view Infection as like the same tier as like Escalation Slayer. Like, yeah, they're fun variations of what Halo can offer. But I've been playing Infection since like Halo 2. Like you you put infection in the halo and then just it's just infection in halo so if you're a diehard infection fan you're gonna love the season if you never really care for it then there really isn't that much new stuff to do within the game talking about that with the new stuff at least we have two new maps we have arena when it comes to forest and we also have btb when it comes to scar let's first talk about forest and this map visually is incredible it looks like sanctuary from classic halo games which I'm all for that. It's a semi-symmetrical map, not identically, but it kind of has the same kind of general layout. I mean, technically it's asymmetrical, but it has like a bit of a symmetry to it. The size of it feels really good. The flow of it was really great. I feel like this is gonna be a great addition to Halo Infinite. Definitely not a competitive map though. This definitely would be a casual Slayer or custom game map, uh, but I wouldn't expect to see this within any form of like ranked modes anytime soon. Scar is a really cool map by just the way it looks. It looks absolutely amazing. At first when I saw this map, when it comes to the previews, I thought it was gonna be a bit like Rat Race, where like you had an outer ring you can use vehicles around, and the inner area is kind of more for players to fight gunfights. But it seems like it's a good blend between the two. There's enough line of sights being cut off to where vehicles aren't just like crazy overpowered on it. I only got a chance to play on it like a couple times within the rotations because it's just kind of random how BTB plays out. I feel like this is the first map where Bandit Rifle Stars will really shine as well. As you do have longer lines of sight than other BTB maps, it seems like the vehicle play has a little bit more freedom of movement not as restricted as maps as say like fragmentation or high power but not as freeing as something like oasis but 
about that level. And visually, this map is just absolutely incredible. I did a walkthrough on the live stream and I was just looking at things and like, wow, 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 it looks amazing. There's even a teleporter on the map, which 343 games tend to not really feature, which I think is a cool addition. If you fall through the bottom middle of this like little vent, it'll teleport you back or to the outer ring of things. So, you know, it's really cool because these BTB maps are larger and a little bit harder to traverse. So having a teleporter mixed in there, just just a nice addition. Now, throughout the season, we will have five events. They're all be kind of filling out the content that's already there. So we have two infection events of Hazmat and Containment, which 343's Twitter recently just cryptically posted this video and a lot of people are like, oh my God, is this the Battle Royale? No, it's not. It's the infection event that for Hazmat. So you just kind of build out your Hazmat core when it comes to an event pass that has 10 tiers on it. Likely you're just gonna be playing infection on it. Now when it comes to these two seasonal events, a big hit is gonna be the lack of cutscenes that were brought up the day before the launch of the season, which I feel like for 343, it's kind of like a not necessarily a scummy way to slide that news in but it definitely felt like you kind of put it under the rug a little bit uh just because like you kind of expect that stuff to happen right with a true live service game like we see with call of duty apex legends fortnite that every time there's a new season you get some new cutscene that kind of progress a lightly written story kind of progressing through now with the cuts that 343 had to deal with earlier in this year a lot of people like the animation team and the campaign team were effectively laid off which leaves no room for 343 to make this type of content so it's not really that they don't want to do this it's just that their hands were tied by microsoft and ultimately i didn't really care much for the story it only got interesting with season three like season one wasn't really much of a story it's more of an introduction to just being in halo <laughs> season two's story was well, uh, generous to call that a story at least so lack of cutscenes for these seasonal events i'm kind of like yeah whatever i don't really care i care more about just like play the game and you know have some interesting experiences hopefully do something cool with these the other three events are going to be returning events we've had previously within halo infinite we have 10 right 2 and 10 right 3 events each will feature two separate event passes so ultimately 20 items you can unlock through these event passes to kind of fill out your yo roy core which is definitely needed these fracture cores are so limited in customization i'm glad to see they're going to be filled out a little bit more rather than just like constantly putting in something new well we already have some good stuff that's already there just kind of fill that out a little bit and help players feel a little bit more unique when playing the game because it seems like most of the fracture core customization was tied to the shop which you can buy into that if you want but i'm not really a big fan of these fracture cores and we'll also have the return of the cyber showdown which was one of my favorite events just because i thought the customization they brought for that event was pretty cool like that black pink and purple art style to it just it looks cool. Now the long-awaited ranked Slayer has finally come into Halo Infinite as people have been uh, asking for it for since the launch of the game effectively and it's quite interesting as you'll start out with assault rifle and bandit rifle starts within this and the radar will also be enabled. So effectively it's going to be pretty much playing much like a social game but with just ranks tied behind it. Though the funny thing is that I've been seeing a lot of people out there. The funny thing is that I've been seeing a lot of players posting their ranks within ranked Slayer and it, everyone's getting like placed in the gold. Some people even, even in the silver and these guys are good players like much better than me and i normally place like diamond tier when it comes to your regular ranked mode within halo infinite this seems pretty standard when it comes to these rotational players which are going to be now a month long instead of two weeks long like they were previously personally i don't really have an interest to play rank slayer i would much rather just play the regular ranked mode with the BR starts. But if you just want to play ranked Slayer in Halo Infinite, more power to you. There've been some amazing Forge updates as well just to give creative people, well, more freedom to create some awesome stuff. This is where I think the future of Halo is going to rely on. And giving Forgers more tools to make some more awesome stuff is exactly what Halo Infinite needs. Most notably for the aesthetic side of things is at being able to have water you can place within the map. We've never had that within Halo's Forge mode. It's something that's always been requested for years and years now. Finally, it's in there. Uh, right now, now there are no physics tied to it though 343 did state that they are looking to add more features to the water when it comes to forge later on down the line they added in generic zone captures generic skull and generic ball options so then people can script those how they want those are the mini game modes so you can have things that are kind of small and stuff like that different objectives and nodes and things like that i'm not much of a forger so I, this update while i'm happy for a lot of people out there uh doesn't really do a whole lot for me but i think it's going to be great for custom games and hopefully stuff that can be added into matchmaking eventually 
A really cool thing that came with this season is that they're now trying to separate the files when it comes to campaign and multiplayer. So then when you change things in multiplayer, they don't change things in campaign. They are starting to do that now. It seems like within maybe like season five or six that they will have a full partition between the two. And so then you can continue on updating the multiplayer how you want while leaving the balance of the campaign intact. Kind of surprising that that had to be done in the first place, but we all know how Halo Infinite was kind of pushed out the door that, that this was probably the only way to make it work. So is season four going to be the reason why you should jump back in to play Halo? Probably not. Though I do feel like this is the turning point for sentiment around Halo Infinite is that now that we've fully experienced what a season feels like with season three within Halo Infinite and that we're into season four, which will run until mid-October and then we have season five, that the game will actually start feeling like a live service, which people have been promised since the beginning of this game. And community sentiment isn't something that's going to switch overnight where it's going to go from just super negative to super positive. Positive. It's gonna be one of those moments where you go like, you know what, Halo Fit's a pretty good game now. My biggest concern is that I hope to see this game get continued support beyond June of 2024 when Microsoft redoes their balancing of their budget. I just really hope that like long form, like developer made content is gonna be there for Halo Infinite beyond June of 2024 when the fiscal year of Microsoft rolls over, but we'll just have to wait and see.